Welcome to Starkey Sound Bites. I'm Dave Fabry, Starkey's Chief Innovation Officer and host of the podcast. Uh, I'm really excited and have long anticipated this podcast today. Uh, Derek Johnson is on the information technology team, part of the team at Starkey. And um, actually, my first encounter with him was through a problem that I was having on my computer. We got to talking after that, and I learned that in addition to his expertise in solving my problem with my computer that day, he's also the creative force and uh, behind his duck, who is Insta-famous with over 100,000 followers on Instagram. And that duck's name is uh, Ben Afquack. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that a little later. Um, but how does this apply then to hearing healthcare professionals who are our predominant listeners on the podcast or viewers if you're watching on our YouTube channel? Uh, we know that our customers often wear multiple hats, including the one of hearing care professional as well as small business owner. I've had many conversations with small business owners and audiologists who say they don't understand uh, how to promote themselves, how to even get started on social media to promote their business. And that's where Derek is going to share some of his wisdom uh, as he began with Ben Afquack and, and talk a little bit about and provide some tips that people can use as to raise their expertise on social media and perhaps shed some light on what they can do in social media. So Derek, with that by way of intro, thank you for joining us on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's it, it, like I said, I've been uh, waiting for this a long time. And, and as I said, you're an IT professional. I'll endorse you. Two thumbs up at Starkey. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about how long you've been here um, and, uh, and what a typical day is like for you. Yeah, uh, I started with Starkey a year and a half ago. I was a contractor and then came on full time. Um, you know, it's a, it's a lot of... Um, Running around like a chicken with my head cut off, to be honest. <laughs> a duck or a chicken? Yeah. Let's, let's keep it yeah, to chicken. Yeah, we'll go with chicken so, for so now. So as not to get yeah, uh, yeah. Mr. Afquack uh, upset with you. Yeah, we don't want to scare him. Indeed. Well, and, and to that end, how have you seen, I mean, IT used to be sort of the help desk. Uh, information technology has really evolved and at a rapid pace. How have you seen, since you've been a consultant and now a team member at Starkey, how has information technology changed in, in the past five years? It's, it's a lot like a constant game of whack-a-mole, right? When you get caught up with one thing, then the next thing comes out and you have to figure out how to make things work with whatever it is that just changed everything that you thought you knew. Well, um, so now let's transition to the star of the show, really, and the vehicle, <laughs> really, for uh, uh, the beginning of today's podcast anyway. How and when did Ben Afquack come about? So I got Ben... A little over four years ago, I got him when he was a day old. He was just a tiny little fluff ball. Um, no intention of him becoming an internet star. Um, I just got a pet duck because mm -hmm. they're cute, and it was $8 at a farm store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the whole Instagram thing kind of happened on accident, to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. um, we were out at a park, and when you have a pet duck, your friends come with you to the park and sure. take pictures. And there was one picture where the duck was walking away, and he kind of turned around and looked back at the camera right when my friend took a picture and it looked like he was posing like a model. Awesome. And so he just on the spot at the park whipped up this Instagram account called the duck a fitness model and then hashtagged all of the funny, trendy fitness model hashtags. And we all thought we were hilarious. And for the next month or so, we were just coming up with different ideas of, yeah. of um, you know, different ways that we could poke fun at that sort of yeah, you were community. kind of doing it on a lark right? yeah we were yeah. absolutely trying yeah. to make fun of instagram yeah. just between you know four or five of us like right. we never thought anyone else in the world would see it and, right um and it just kind of blew up it was it was pretty wild so one day did was it literally you said that one post mm -hmm. where he, he's looking back striking a pose did that one really hit a lot or was it just sort of a slow boil um when you how often were you posting and was there a trigger that caused one to go viral that caused your number of followers uh, to explode? Yeah, so the the first one, I don't think anyone other than mm -hmm. us saw it, um, mm -hmm. but it kind of sparked the idea of the, the concept of what we were doing, what the purpose of that Instagram account was. Um, and so from there then, you know, because it was the, the fitness model 
thing that he was making fun of, we would sneak him into gyms and make fitness tutorials mm-hmm. with him. I've and seen sneak some him. of them. They're hilarious. Yeah. So funny side note on that one. Um, we posted that before the duck got famous. Okay. Um, so we snuck him into this anytime fitness. Mm-hmm. And um, fast forward a month later, all of a sudden, you know, 20,000 people were following him. And I got a call from the owner of the gym. Like, okay. hey, I just saw my gym on a, a video that my friend shared with me um to please don't bring ducks into my gym <laughs> and but, then did he ask to sort of uh have you throw him a bone in terms of an endorsement by ben <laughs> affleck that he was able to buff up his his wings a little bit more or uh i was i was hoping that could be the first yeah. endorsement but yeah. no he made it very clear like you are welcome to but, come back here but no no feathered friends with you so, yeah, so tip, uh, pro tip for those looking to start out. Um, in your case, it was better to ask forgiveness than permission, but <laughs> it probably um, uh, walks a fine line or you know, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. Yeah. You got to be careful in terms of the permissions. And, and I've noticed more and more places now, actually, um, I belong to a different gym and, and there's lots of postings about, um, you know, not, not having your camera in the locker room areas. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I've noticed recently on the airline that I fly Delta, they now make announcements that, you know, you need to get permission from flight attendants or passengers before snapping photos and loading them up to social media. So it is the world we live in yeah. now that, um, there, there are sometimes permissions that need to be, um, uh, received before proceeding. But, but like you said, you, you kind of, kind of early on discovered that you had, 20,000 followers after some of those initial posts and where the uh, 100,000 is is it over 100,000 these days? Yeah, I think it's 102, 103 something like yeah. that. The most followed duck still, right? On Instagram. You know, there's there's a bunch out there now. I'm not I sure. Yeah. yeah. I I think, you know, the the record, the Guinness World Record which you are still, the holder. Yeah, we still hold that. But yeah. I also think that um what really happened there was Guinness got the bit yeah. Right, they bought in and they were like, "Okay, I see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. we'll play." Yeah. And uh, I don't think that it'll ever be in another Guinness <laughs> World Record book, or they, you know, that you can look it up anywhere anymore. Um, but uh, I think they just played along with the 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 rising famous duck yeah. joke that we were kind of in. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, but but a joke with a point, and this is now again. I want to segue a little bit into private practice owners who are looking to increase their visibility in their community. Uh, you can use traditional marketing, you know, in newspapers and things like that. We're seeing a lot of that go the by and by. Um, still, some effective for the local market if they're looking to attract patients, but to increase their visibility, uh, many people are turning to social media. You chose Instagram rather than Twitter early on mm-hmm. because you were using a video format. Right. And so what advice might you have for in, people saying, you know, I don't know even how to start. You, you, had a, you had sort of this special combo of you had this duck who turned out to be photogenic and not shying away from some of the poses you were asking him to do. And then you had this sort of you were ahead of the curve. Now, now you said there are lots of imitators in terms of ducks and, and, and different fowl on, uh, on Instagram, <laughs> different fowl of different kinds. But um, you know, how, what advice might you have for a, a practice owner as to how to get started on social media? Yeah, that's uh, the funny thing is, is I was I wasn't even on Instagram before okay. this. I didn't have an Instagram, and the only reason I have a personal Instagram was to figure out what my friends were posting about my duck and laugh with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so some of this was all like I kind of only know this side of things. Like sure. I didn't really use social media other than you know Facebook, sure. you know, to keep up with friends from you know back in the day or whatever. But um, I think the big thing that really made it happen was having that initial theme. There was consistency to it. Consistency. Yeah. Know what your vision is. Exactly. And you knew that right from the start. And I think that's so important is figure out what do you want to stand for? How would you describe it in 10 words as to what the vision is for what you want to do? Yeah. And and for us, it's, it's actually kind of evolved um, okay. over time. Um, I think you can only poke fun at one specific demographic for so long before it becomes mean rather than funny. Sure. You know? Understood. Um, and so it started as just, 
yeah, making fun of the trendy trends, being trendy. Sure. You know, yeah. it was like some of it's just so ridiculous anyway that it's like they handed me the content to yeah. to make fun of. Um, and then it has sort of just it was a very gradual change. So I don't think that it really caught people off guard. It wasn't this hard turn. Mm -hmm. um, it, it kind of just turned into the duck goes with me to do the things that I enjoy doing. So mm -hmm. it's become this kind of adventure page, this travel mm -hmm. page, uh, mm -hmm. a motorcycle page, um, a music page. Um, and it just sort of worked out um, because I brought them with me to do things anyway, the same way that I bring my dogs with me to certain places. Mm -hmm. um, and it just sort of worked out that the duck comes with me to do the things I'm doing anyway. So sometimes I just whip out my camera and it's an easy post. But mm -hmm. Um, I think adventure has really been the the main theme over time. Started as just making fun of a specific trend thing, um, but has really evolved into just adventure and fun and just good vibes. I think there's so well, much negative stuff out there. Yeah, and know? there's also an authenticity, as you just said. You know, you bring you bring uh, Afquack with you to do the things that you like to do, the same way that you bring your dogs. To, mm -hmm. to do things and and there's an authenticity there that you can tell as a follower of the page that isn't phony and it isn't right. and, and it's part of really understanding what it is that you want to use this vehicle for your in your case it started one way but then it sort of is now a, an online uh diary of <laughs> of your life and the adventures that uh, you enjoy together like you said motorcycles and everything else yeah so yeah it's 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 fun to watch and watch as it continues to build. How often um, do you post? Has that increased or decreased or remained the same over time? What advice might you have? Again, we all know that with social media, content is king or queen, and, and you can lose followers or lose interest, at least, with your followers if you don't post frequently enough, but then there's also sometimes fatigue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a fine line, for yeah. sure. Um, I've definitely noticed that um, if I have consistent good content, the following grows. If, yeah. if I'm trying to, there was a period of time, cause I've experimented a little bit mm -hmm. to kind of see what mm -hmm. happens and try mm -hmm. to trick the algorithms and just see what you can do, you know? Um, and I've found that if I'm consistently posting things that are really creative, it grows like crazy. But then if it starts being, well, I said I was going to post four times this week and I've only done three, um, snap a picture of him in the backyard and don't put any effort into a cute caption or anything like that. Um, when I start getting lazier with it, um, it actually might be better to just not have posted that fourth one that sure. week or not post um, anything for that. So I think quality of content is, is very important. Um, and if you're able to maintain that quality content or you have enough stuff in the chamber you know you have enough things lined mm -hmm. up um then posting frequently i think can be a really good thing and i've seen really good um results from from doing that as well yeah but it is essential again for thinking of developing that long-term vision having content updating it with meaningful content that's gonna ha have your audience be impacted and not feel like oh uh, yeah, they said that they're going to do four posts, and, mm -hmm. and it feels like two of them are, are authentic and two are filler. Yeah. So it's like when you get an album and you can tell that only four of the songs were, <laughs> were actually good, and the rest was like, oh, but we said we told the record label we would release it by this date, and you can tell that those in-between tracks aren't very good. Like, For sure. We all skip those tracks, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and on social media, that means you're a skipped account now. If people get mm -hmm. too familiar with some of the the lazy posts, they're, they're don't, they don't want to follow that anymore. No. And I so, don't. so the other thing I think of is, is, you know, the authenticity and really, in a way, it's finding your passion, the things that you can do that come natural. You said adventure, and then, and then when, when the duck comes along with you, for practice owners thinking about within the hearing space, I've seen um, uh, Instagram accounts uh, and, and, and other social media platforms as well that are solely devoted to cleaning ears. Um, something you can think about in, in the most unlikely of spaces where doing something that you do all the time and with regularity and frequency that suddenly people take an interest in. People are fascinated with, with uh, wax in ears. Mm -hmm. So it, it again, it isn't having this big vision to be serious sometimes. Sometimes it may start out of something that you enjoy doing, whether it's 
uh, recording different loud sounds or the levels of sounds in everyday environments, cleaning ears, ear mold impressions. I haven't really seen one light up yet on that, but I think there are people that are fascinated by scanning ears using digital scanning or yeah. ear mold impressions. And I think it's really figuring out what it is that you can get consistent content, that you're not going to jump exactly. the shark or jump the duck, yeah. I guess, <laughs> um, in, in, the, in the Hollywood sense that really in the history of that was with Happy Days back in the 70s. Um, they had a plot line that worked for the first several seasons, but then they started going on location away from Milwaukee, where the show had been originally set. They went to Hawaii, and, and Fonzie jumped over a shark on water skis. And, and it really became the definition then of when a show jumps the shark, it's run out of plot. Yeah. So think of that runway as you're thinking about your Instagram or your social media posts. Keep the focus, allow for evolution, mm -hmm. but maintain that authenticity and passion that you started with while you're evolving into the different areas. And that's what you've been so successful at. Yeah. And if you think about it, like I think about the things that I follow personally, mm -hmm. right? There's some things that I would have never thought to Google or thought mm -hmm. to, you know, look up. Like there's this account that I follow where it literally is just, it, it made me think of this when you said the earwax thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's this person who heats up a metal ball to like as hot as it can be without melting. Mm -hmm. And then he just drops the ball on random things. Like you can see what the ball looks like on jello or mm -hmm. on a snowball or like, and if you describe that to me, I'd be like, that's weird. Like, why would you watch that? But I do. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Well, I remember the old one from a number of years ago, Will It Blend? Oh, um, they would yeah. put stuff in yeah. blenders and see whether it would blend or, or just be a, a chunk, a ball of material, or it would destroy the blender. I think it's all about whether it's new technology, whether it's within the information technology space or the hearing aid space, how do you differentiate yourself? Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, where you were on the leading edge of that by differentiating yourself from the sea of sameness out there. And I think that's what practice owners who are thinking about how do they differentiate themselves in the sea of sameness, whether it's traditional uh, newspaper or, or TV, for those who are fortunate to live in a small enough market that can afford to do TV yeah. commercials. Social media is such a great way. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary V is someone that I follow mm. just because he's so authentic in terms of allowing for imperfection, allowing for himself to come through. And I think you've done that so, so well with Ben Affleck. Yeah, and there's there's definitely been some mistakes and learning opportunities mm -hmm. along the can way. You, can too. you list a mistake or two that 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 you learned from? Yeah. Um not getting I think the the biggest mistake that I've found um is trying to do the same thing that works but not getting creative enough with changing the way that you do it. Um so like uh, you've have you seen the drumming video, the duck drumming video? Yes. 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 So that blew up like yeah. crazy, and people were making all of these remixes yeah. with it, and each one's getting twenty million, fifty million views, wow. and it was just going nuts. And like the following was increasing, which meant yeah. you know places were calling and wanting to you know do these deals with us and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, and then I was like, oh well, that's all people want to see, so that's all I posted. Yeah. And now it's kind of run its course, sure. and now. It, it kind of lost it. Like everyone's seen it. And, yeah. and I didn't, um, I was able to find all these different ways to do it at first. And then I kind of ran out of, yeah. of ways to become creative and new with it. Mm -hmm. And now people just started seeing the same thing with a different background. And, and yeah. uh, I kind of played that into the ground because I got lazy with it. Yeah. I was like, oh, all I do is post this 10 million views. Then I get a call and someone wants to send me a scooter, you know, like, yeah. let's keep doing that. This is great. And, um, I think if keeping the theme, but without it getting boring, I, I think is really the, the line you have to, to find. Com completely. And then going back again to the roots of keeping your authentic self, yeah. you're not doing it to, to get things or money. Right. I mean, it, it's turned out to be, you know, you, you've had some great visibility. Talk a little bit about, um, yeah, I know you've been on some local shows, you've been on some national shows. Uh, uh, talk a little bit, just a handful of the appearances you've made with uh, uh with the duck um during the time that he's become insta famous yeah well i got to be on a podcast at starkey once that was pretty wild yes indeed. <laughs> well that's got to be the pinnacle yes um so we've done good morning america yeah. um the, the coolest one was when um 
I actually can't say what show it was okay. now that I think about it. Okay, I'll, don't, I'll, I'll yeah. tell you later. Yeah. But we got to be on a show uh, and they flew us out to Hollywood wow. and paid for us to go hang out in California when it was February and snowing and terrible here. Mm. Um, so that was probably the coolest one because we got to get out of Minnesota in February. Um, and there was a post on that one, I believe, yeah. where he's walking down the aisle on a plane. Yeah, right? and yeah. They, apparently they have really strict duck policies on planes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, normally you can't fly with a duck at all, but because uh, some agency in Hollywood called and got permission and said he was a celebrity, then we got to. Um, I was really worried about that yeah. because... I don't know how he's going to react to right. that. And right. We went to the vet to make sure that it was safe for him and all of yeah. that. But I was like, what if he just quacks the whole, what is it, three-hour flight to California, <laughs> four hours, something yeah. like that? What if he's just quacking the whole time and I'm the guy sitting there with a duck on my lap? Like, this is, the I was so nervous. Of every other passenger. Yeah. But, but he did well? He slept the whole time. Yeah, well, yeah, just immediately. Like, something about the plane. He was like a baby in a car. Like, he just went to sleep immediately. I love it. Well, and so let's... Um, I, I, you know, did you come up with the name when you first got them? Uh, as a, you said, you got them just a couple of days. Did you come up with Ben Affquack right off the bat, or did it become after you started considering names when he became, uh, and you were looking for the tagline on Instagram? So um, it came before the Instagram. Okay. Um, and like I said, when you when you get a baby pet duck, like all of your friends show up, people for that sure. you haven't seen, like. Everyone was over at my house meeting this cute little fluffy duck, and we were just throwing out names. Like, if you're going to ride a moped with a duck yeah. or, and walk a duck on a leash, like, you have to do something weird with the name. Oh, like yeah, you can't, gotta have a name. Yeah, you can't be normal with the name. It's gotta be strange. Um, so we were coming up with dad joke pun names. And, oh, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I will say I made a, a, a list, you know, like Quacker Jack. Was that a possibility? Yeah. Or, um, yeah. Duck Norris. Duck Norris. That one would have been like good. that one. Quack a lot. Nicholson was one. Quack Nicholson yep. is great. I had Bill Quack Murray. Efren. Uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah. As another or Quacky Chan. Quacky Chan uh, would, be, would good be good too. too. But uh, but I think Ben Affquack is the winner. I mean, you yeah. Have to, you I considered all of those options. I love it. We thought about getting um, a pet chicken and naming it, and naming it Hennifer Lopez. Nice. Um, to the point where, like, I was so <laughs> set on the the matching pun names that I started researching <laughs> chickens, and then uh, after researching, decided I didn't yeah. want a chicken. But. No. Well, and, and that begs the question then. So um, you said you have dogs. I do, yeah. And a, a duck isn't a typical, unless you're a farm kid, uh, uh, it isn't a typical kind of pet. So um, how is it that you came to get them? So, yeah, and it's definitely not typical to have them in the way that we have them. No, you know, usually no, if you no, have them, it's yeah. for eggs or right. for, you know, right. whatever. Um but I actually, when I was a little bit younger, um, I, I had a duck um, and some life things happened. Um, you know, it was a little bit darker of a time in my life and uh, I ended up going to treatment to get help for that. And when I went to treatment, I had to find a new home for this duck that I had. He had been kind of my only buddy for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of broke my heart. That was one of my, like one of the hardest things um, was like, can't just go get this duck back. like there's no uh you can bring your dog to a kennel or something right. like there's nowhere like that for no. a duck no. um so i was like okay someday when i get my life together a little bit i'm gonna i'm gonna do this again i'm going to do it right um and that's how the the adventure duck thing sort of started right. because i didn't want to just get a duck and then make a mistake with it again i right. wanted to really give it the a good life and and really have it be the the king of all ducks, you know, like just live like royalty. And that's how that all started. So um, when we got our first house, literally before we even moved into the house, I had a duck. It was just, it was on the vision board. I don't know why. I love it. It was kind of a... No, I can understand. I mean, especially if it were, it represented a period where you had to give up something yeah. that at that time was exceedingly important to you. And then wanting to put that on the vision board to say, I want to get back to a point... Yeah we can't rewind things that happened to us, but to get to a point where I can do that again and, but do it the right way. Yeah. And, it was very and, metaphorical in a yeah, way. I get it. Yeah. I get it. That's, um, that's impressive in terms of then your commitment 
And how long do duck, what's the life expectancy of a duck? So I didn't look this up before I got a duck. Yeah. Um, eight to 12 years. <laughs> okay. And how old is is Ben? He's only four. So we okay, have a so lot of adventures left. Because that. that's always the thing I say about, about pets in general. They uh, it, The thing that's so wonderful, but also the thing that's heartbreaking is they just don't live long enough. Right. I and mean, they become such an integral part of your life, no matter what, I guess, unless you get a parrot or a tortoise. Um, uh, it, it's likely that you're going to outlive pets. And, and so have you contemplated that that's, I mean, as I would imagine now that you really are bonded uh, and, and that does set up a, a point in time in the future where it's, you know, there will be a loss. Yeah. People may not understand it if they're yeah. not pet people, but I get it 100%. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I'm the sort of person, I will always have a dog. I will always have, you know, the normal, easier pets. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'm pretty decided. I think that, that, uh, this will be the last duck that I have. One and done. Yeah, yeah. I think if you win the lottery, stop playing, man. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I think that I, I'm too afraid that after having a duck, that's this cool. I've, I've never seen another pet duck that acts like no. him and wants no. to be around its people no. the way that he is. Um, and I think that it would just set it up to like be disappointed and, you know, then you have eight to 12 years of a duck that you're like, well, you're not the other one, you know, <laughs> yeah. and that just doesn't seem right. Well, no, so. and I, I just think it's so admirable that you had that goal and, 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 and now you've, now you've put that on your vision board, vision accomplished yeah. and, um, and then see what is next. And that's really my final question that I have is, you know, what's next then for you and for, uh, the duck in the short term and what do you, what do you see in the future? So, yeah, we, we get to do all of these cool opportunities, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of them are just for fun. There are yeah. things that, you know, uh, going out to California in February, it's a lot of fun. But we've also gotten to use that following for things that are really important to us. Right. Um, and so I've really used it a lot to um, promote things like resources for people who have addiction issues to find recovery or you know overdose prevention and awareness and things like that mental health resources um and i own a a small business um, outside of my day job here and and i've been able to use the following to kind of help build that business which is an addiction um you know recovery business and get to use it for to help people as well yeah. like laughs and and being goofy and riding a moped with a duck is awesome and that's mainly what we do still but also it's like okay can we do some good with this you know you buried you buried the lead in the sense really from my perspective is that you know yes it's funny um he became insta famous but you're using it for an impact and that's really i think where it blends so well and i hope that's one of the reasons that attracted you to Starkey a year and a half ago is we're so much more than a company that just makes devices that you stick in your ears that help you mm-hmm. hear better. We're really connecting people to each other. We know there's strong comorbidity between untreated hearing loss, loneliness, social isolation, depression. Um, you know, there, there's links, at least correlations with untreated hearing loss and cognitive decline in humans. I don't know the links on ducks and whether mm-hmm. ducks uh, indeed suffer hearing loss as they get older in life, but we'll talk about that professionally later. I'll yeah. see if I can return the favor that you uh, capably serve me in terms of my IT needs. But you know, the fact that you found that way to get to something even more personal with the, the vehicle that you were provided is perhaps the best tip really, to offer clinicians, uh, practice owners who are looking to navigate through this morass of social media and say, what, you know, find a platform that works for you. If you're doing video, Instagram's kind of the, the preferred mm-hmm. choice in, in many cases. And if you want to just do one-liners, Twitter, uh, now Threads is another one. Are you, are, are you on Threads now, no, too? I don't, I don't even know what that That's is. That's a new one with, uh, off of Facebook. Oh. Um, and... Um, so there's, it's finding your vehicle. As you said, I think, um, f- thinking about your vision for what you want to do with this. And, and really, I don't know whether your vision included at the start this, uh, this pivot that going into issues with uh, mental health and, and those issues, was that a part of it uh, when you began or did this sort of become the byproduct of what happened when you had success? 
Um, I mean, I think it was a part of my my own mental health and mm-hmm. journey um, with recovery. And so um, it was never, I never thought we would have enough people to yeah. to have any sort of impact in, but it was very impactful to those things for me. Um, and um, so then it was, it was kind of just an easy, like, well, I have all of these followers, fun videos are cute, but you know, can we help someone with this? And you should see some of the the posts whenever we do like a recovery or mental health post. Yeah. It is so many people that are like, my son this, my dad yep. that, you know, and it's literally just hundreds of comments that are like, thank you for sharing this. Like I this I needed to hear this today because so and so in my life is is struggling with this. And um I think it's just so important. And it a lot of these things don't get talked about no. enough. Um no. and so I think it's for whatever reason, as human beings, like it's really nice to know that you're not alone with something. Oh, and and humor is the vehicle to get to that mm-hmm. more difficult conversation in many cases. And I think that's where mental health, number one, it's inextricably intertwined with hearing loss, mm-hmm. but also it's something that people are often uncomfortable talking about. So again, what you've done so successfully, like I said, I think you buried the lead on this in the sense that you've used it as a vehicle to now enable you to have a conversation. Uh, And people just come out of the woodwork by the humor that then goes to a serious place, Mm -hmm. a serious topic. And that's not that different than addressing hearing loss and use of hearing aids. And so that's where I think people may have wondered, why in the heck were we talking about Ben Afquack on the um, on the podcast today, but I think there's so many parallels, and I really, really, sincerely appreciate your coming on to talk about this topic, and it, it, and especially knowing that it is such a personal one for you. And um, I, I love watching your journey that you're on now. I love how it's pivoting into these other areas where you can really make an impact, and you're making an impact on people's lives uh, in your day job <laughs> and uh, with Ben Afquack. Life is crazy sometimes, isn't it? Crazy, but it's good, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a good not, ride. It's a good ride. Yeah. So thank you very much, Derek. Thanks for, for having me. This was fun. It's, it's our pleasure. And um, to our listeners, uh, we hope you enjoyed uh, this episode of Sound Bites as much as I did. Uh, if you liked it, please like, rate, review on your favorite podcast, and um, share it with your friends, with anyone who you might think that would benefit from this episode. We also want to hear from you if you have ideas for other podcasts in the future. Uh, send us an email at soundbites at starkey.com. And Derek, before we go, I want to ask again, what's, what's Ben Afquack's handle on Instagram? We didn't discuss it yet. I think they can find it pretty easily, but go ahead and spell it out. Yeah, it's Minnesota Duck, and Minnesota spelled out. Excellent. Okay. And so... For those who didn't go to the University of Minnesota, M-I-N-N-E-S-O-T-A, Minnesota. So, um, you know, please, again, um, uh, let us know what your thoughts are about this episode and in the future, your ideas. Thank you very much for listening or watching if you're watching on our YouTube channel. And we hope to hear and see you again very soon. Bye.